Murphy's perfect love Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how he gave his son? Cause I have found this love I believe in the sun Show me
Hello everyone, welcome to another Sunday service here at NLVC Kids Rock in the Cornerstone department. Welcome, we're so glad and excited that you could join us today. Uh, we really hope that you had a wonderful week and that you guys are staying uh, safe and healthy uh, during this time. As we move on, I would just like to uh, make this one quick announcement and remind everyone that um, there are those of you who, uh, are, who are already doing this, but if you send in a photo of you participating in worship in the uh, proper cloth, clothing, right, proper attire with your Bibles and in, uh, with a good um, attitude and posture, uh, you guys will get credit for the talents so that you guys can send, spend those talents uh, in the talent event uh, that's going to be happening sometime uh, in the next few months. So I know that uh, there are those of you who are or who have been doing it and started doing it, which is awesome. Uh, keep it up. Uh, but for those of you who forgot or um, weren't there when we made the announcement, I'd just like to make uh, let you guys know one more time that yes, uh, send me the photo through email or cow, um, and or you can send it to your leaders, and the leaders can send it to me. You can send it to the welcome team. Uh, because your parents are in the cacao chat room with them as well. Okay? All right. All right. So uh, today uh, is the fourth Sunday of January. And this month we have five Sundays. Yeah, that's right. Five. That's a lot. Um, but this month's theme, as most of you, if not all of you already know, is what? If you said responsibility, then you are correct, right? We're looking at a theme of responsibility. What does it mean to be responsible as followers of Jesus? You know, last week we talked about, we looked in uh, Proverbs, right? And we talked about how King Solomon uh, talks about the ants and how the ants are very responsible and very diligent. They don't need uh, others to tell them uh, how to do their job or what they need to do. Ants just do it. Uh, and also we talked about how um, as followers of Jesus, one of our biggest responsibilities is to love our God, love our God, but also to love our neighbors, to love other people. And so today I want to kind of look at something else, something a little bit different, but still it ties in with responsibility. Now, before I go on, I would like to ask all of you a question, okay? And so, uh, the question is, if today I gave you $600,000, how would you feel and what would you do with the $600,000? Okay, for those of you who are confused, I'll put it up here, right? $600,000. Yes, that is correct. That's five zeros, right? That's all. That's a little over half a million. What would you do with $600,000? I mean, I'm guessing most of you will probably, uh, even if you know what you want to spend, some like want to buy stuff, you'll probably run out of ideas. You'll buy it, you'll have bought all the things you want, and then you still have so much le money left over, you have no idea what you should do with it, right? But here's another question. What if I gave you not 600,000, but 1.2 million dollars? What would you do with 1.2? In fact, let me do you one better. What if you were given three million dollars today? What would you do with three million dollars? Okay, okay, right. That's a lot of money, right? Um, that's a lot of money. Now, why do I ask you guys about this question, right? You know, six hundred thousand dollars, one point two million dollars, three million dollars. You know, why am I asking this question, right? Why am I asking these questions? And so, 
Jesus told his disciples and the people a parable. And a parable is a story where Jesus tells the people a story, and in the story, there is something that Jesus is trying to teach the people, right? Something uh, that is really important, uh, that is uh, also the truth, something that's related to God and God's kingdom. And so Jesus talks about how there is a master, and the master gave three of his servants talents. Now, what is a talent? Well, guess what? Uh, we're talking about money from long time ago, right? Well, guess what? Some experts think that back in the day, one talent, right, long time ago, is probably worth around $600,000 today. Now, of course, you know, different experts and researchers, you know, you know, they have different opinions and different beliefs. Some say it's less, some say it's more. But the thing is, regardless of whether it's $600,000 or $200,000, that's a lot of money, right? But let's just say that it's somewhere around $600,000, okay? That's one talent. Well, the, the master gave one servant five talents another servant, two talents, and the last servant, one talent, okay? And the master, he had to go somewhere, and so he left the servants in charge, and he went on his trip, right? Now, while the master was gone, the first servant, who got five talents, right? Three million dollars. The first servant took the money, and invested the money and did business with the money and worked diligently and uh, because he felt he was responsible to take good care of his master's money and so because he was responsible and diligent that five talents became ten talents so now he has six million dollars wow i mean that's a lot well, guess what? The second servant does the same thing. The second servant is also responsible and diligent. So he takes the two talents, which is, you know, $1.2 million, and he invests it, and he does the business, and he comes back with double. So now he has four talents, which is basically $2.4 million. Wow, that's, that's a lot of money, right? Now the last and third servant, he was given one talent, right? So that's $600,000. So what did he do, guys? Did he also go and invest it? And was he responsible with what his master gave him? Well, unfortunately, no. The third and last servant took the money, right? Took the one talent. And instead of, you know, investing in and doing business and being responsible for what his master gave him, he took it and he buried it under the ground. That's right. You heard me correctly. He buried it under the ground. Now, when the master came back after some time, he called the three servants and he was like, all right, bring in the first servant. And... He was like, all right, report. What have you been doing What with the money I gave you? All right, give me a report. What do you do? And the first servant's like, master, I took the money you gave me and I invested it. I did good business and I brought you back 10 talents, double the amount that you gave me originally. And the master was pleased. He's like, wait, you took my 3 million and now it's 6 million? Good job. Faithful servant. Excellent. All right. And so the master now calls the second servant. And the second servant, again, uh, it's the same thing. The master is like, all right, I gave you two talents, right? $1.2 million. What did you do with it? And the second servant is like, uh, master, I invested it. I had a good business. I doubled it. And so now I have four talents. And the master is like, ah, good job. Good and faithful servant. Good job, excellent work. 
go take a break. And now finally, the master calls the third servant. And the master says, hey, I gave you one talent, right? I gave you $600,000. What did you do with it? And the third servant's like, oh, master, I took it and I wanted to keep it safe. I, I wanted to make sure nothing happened to your money. So I went out. I buried it in a secret place so that no one could steal it. Nothing, so nothing bad will happen to your money. It's safe. Now, how do you think the master responded to his third servant? I mean, let's think about it, right? The first servant doubled the amount. The second servant also doubled the amount. The third servant, however, didn't do anything, right? Nothing happened. It's just exactly the same. The third servant didn't do anything with it, right? His responsibilities, uh, his job, nothing. Okay, well, let's take a look in the Bible and see exactly how the master responded, okay? So if you have your Bibles, uh, open your Bibles. If you don't, go get your Bibles and let's open to uh, the book of Matthew in the New Testament. And let's go to chapter 25. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from the servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So wow, we see that, first of all, the master takes away the talent that he gave the third servant, and he gives it to the first servant. Not only that, to make it worse, the third servant is kicked out. He's, he's sent away, he's gone, he's done, right? So, what is the point of this parable? What is Jesus trying to tell his disciples and the people who are listening to him? Is Jesus trying to tell them that, hey, if you're given money, you need to be responsible with the money, and you need to do, think about how you're going to spend it and how you're going to invest it, right? you got to be a good uh, money spender. You don't just spend it all on whatever you want and then run out of money. No, you got to be really uh, careful with how you spend your money. Is that what Jesus uh, is focusing on? Is that what he's talking about here, guys? Well, not quite. So, what Jesus is trying to, you know, get at, what he's getting at, what he's trying to teach the people is that God, when God created people, right? God created me, he created you guys, right? When he made us, he gave us certain talents, right? Talents, certain abilities, certain gifts. And, you know, the third servant was also given a talent, right? The first servant, the second servant, third servant, all three of them, in the right? In the Bible, it specifically says that the master gave them their talents. And in the same way, similar way, when God created us, when God created you guys, God also gave you talents, all right? Unique uh, abilities and talents, right? For each and every person. And so God wants us to use those talents, to use those gifts that he gave each and every one of us. And the third servant, well, unfortunately for him, he did not use the talents, the talent that God gave him. 
he remember he buried it under the ground so he basically didn't do anything with it he didn't develop it he didn't use it uh, he could have uh, developed it and gotten better right like the first and second servant they got two times their original talents so they developed their talents but the third servant he didn't develop it nor did he use it for god's kingdom or, or to help others remember guys our biggest one of our biggest responsibility right our two biggest responsibility to love god and to love others and we can use these talents that god gave us to love god and to love others to serve one another but the third servant he didn't do that he didn't do anything with the talent that god gave him and so jesus is trying to tell the people and his disciples hey you also have been given talents so don't just waste it or you know, don't just sit there not doing anything with it but be responsible if god gave you a talent or talents so go develop those talents use those talents right and so cornerstone kids as followers of jesus as children of god we also have talents that god gave us and so it is our responsibility to develop those talents and to use those talents now of course cornerstone kids you might be thinking but i'm just a kid i don't know what my talents are i'm not really sure what uh talents and gifts that god gave me and you know that's totally understandable right uh when i was a kid i had no idea right and that's okay the important thing is knowing that yes god gave us talents but also to pray and ask your heavenly father to show you what your talents what your gifts are right because god is the one who made you so if anyone knows it's going to be god so what is what's what's important the first step is to continue to pray right because kids you're going to grow older and you're going to have more responsibilities one day you're going to become an adult you're going to have your own family and so to continue to pray and ask the lord to show you and teach you what your talents are right so that's the first step that's really important got it and also when it comes to talents let's not forget that even if you don't know what your talents are what your uh, unique gifts are at the moment there are still things that we can do to serve and love others and let me just give you one easy but awesome example okay cornerstone kids in your in our department i know that some of you guys serve on the leading worshiper team right and also like the worship team and so you are serving and helping the church which is awesome amazing right good job and also some of you cornerstone kids i know that you serve as tas right teacher assistants and so you go to other departments where there are younger kids or kids who are younger than you and you go there and you help and you serve as ta so you help the other pastors and the other leaders there and so you know that that's also amazing and awesome and we're so thankful and we appreciate your help and your service right you guys are basically loving god and loving others by serving uh fellow brothers and sisters of christ and so that's even though you don't you may not know what exactly your talents are what exactly god gave you that's unique and special you can still serve and love others and be responsible right and while doing that of course like i said pray and ask the lord to show you what talents that god has given you specifically does that make sense okay all right well i hope you guys uh realize that you know not we're still human and we we we're not going to be perfect right but the important thing is these talents even though god gave us these talents it's not like oh it's we shouldn't think of it as oh god gave me that talent so you know i can just you know use that talent on my own strength and and just it's all about me right because that's once again the wrong approach right we're focusing on on me and not on god and so to continue to rely on god to give you kids the strength 
the wisdom and uh, the insight to continue to uh, grow in your relationship with God and to develop your talents and your gifts. Okay? All right. Well, uh, I just really hope that you guys have an awesome week. Uh, and that you guys have, um, for those of you who are going to small group, I, have, I hope you guys have a wonderful time. Let me just pray for you guys uh, and close. And I'll see you all next week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another day and another opportunity to learn about you and your word, which is the truth. Lord Father, as we continue to learn about responsibility and what it means to be responsible as followers of Jesus, as your children, as your servants, Lord Father, we just pray that we will be able to realize and recognize that you have given each of us talents, gifts, when you created us. Lord Father, we pray that we, you will continue to reveal and show to our Cornerstone kids what kind of talents and gifts that you've given them and that they will be able to develop them and use them for good, use them for your kingdom, for your glory, and to love you and to love others. Lord Father, uh, bless us this week, and we just pray that you will keep us safe and watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil ones. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.